Section 1.6 is one of the most important sections in the textbook because it deals with it deals and applies to everything that we do throughout this entire course. Since a lot of this course is going to be on solving equations and graphing, you are going to have to know the two words very well, domain and range. Now, within section 1.6, they represent a set of data a number of different ways. First of all, a set of data can be represented as what is called ordered pairs. And hopefully you've seen all these before. For example, I have the problem, a set of ordered pairs, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 5. That same set of information can be represented by what is called a mapping. A mapping looks like the diagram that I have drawn right here. A mapping, this particular mapping is exactly the same as the set of ordered pairs. If you notice, I have the ordered pair 1, 3, and over here I have the number 1 has an arrow drawn to the y value of 3. I have the second ordered pair is 1 for x, and it has a y value of 4, so it has the arrow drawn to the 4. And then the third ordered pair is x is 2 and it's got an arrow to go to the number 5. Now you're going to see in section 1.6 they talk about mappings and that is what a mapping is. Now the mo two most important words in this particular video example domain and range. As I wrote way over here on the right domain are always the x values always. Another word that our book uses they're the input values range is always the y values and it's sometimes in our textbook called the output so for example if I was going to ask you in the examples that I have written up here what is the domain and I'm gonna go back to the top I'm gonna circle the domain the domain are the black numbers or the x values in the ordered pairs. Now obviously the 1 appears twice. I only need to write the 1 once. And then the 2, for this 2 in the last ordered pair, that would be the domain of this particular problem. The range are the green numbers or the y values, which are the numbers 3, 4, and 5. And that is how you identify domain and range. One more time, domain is always the x values, y, or the range is always the y values. Now, if you need to pause the video, please pause it and, and copy down this information. And I'll continue on with some graphing examples. All right, let's do a graphing, a graphing example. I have a, a grid here. And we are going to plot the ordered pairs 1, 2, 3, 6, and 5, negative 7. Okay, so 1, 2 is about right there. 3, 6 would be just about off my chart, about right there. And 5, negative 7 is going to be down here. Those are our only points. The question, what is the domain. Well the domain is always the x values and so if I was to list the domain I notice my first dot and I'm going to color it in red is over one unit so therefore in the x direction I always move I always move left or right for domain and I look at those numbers so my first domain is a one the second dot, which I'm going to color in green, I'm going to cover over. Now I have to move over three units. So three is also part of the domain. And finally, the last dot, which I'm going to overlay in blue, I move over five units to get to there. So do my, my domain is the numbers one, three, and five for this particular example. If I had to ask you what the range is, the range is the y values. That is up and down. So now the first dot, which I'm going to color blue, I have to move up 
2 to get to the level of where that dot is, so 2 is in my range. The second dot I'm going to color over in black. Now I have to move all the way up to 6. 6 would be the second number in my domain. And then the last one is I'm coloring over in red, way down here at the bottom. I have to move down to negative 7, and that is in my range. And therefore, whenever you're asked to list domain and range from a, a grid with a bunch of plotted points, that is how you go about listing the domain and the range. Okay, let's draw another grid. And we're going to plot the exact same points. However, this time, I'm going to connect them. I need to do a little better job of drawing my y-axis here. Uh, I've got to start over. I'm sorry. I need to uh, make sure that I get up high enough. Okay, and we're going to plot the exact same three points. So we're going to plot the point 1, 2, which is about right there. We're going to plot the point 3, 6, which is right there. And we need to plot the point 5, negative 7, which is going to be down here. And I'm going to connect them this time with a line. So that means all the decimals are included in this particular graph. So if I had to ask you what is the domain of this particular graph, I need to find out which x values have values on those lines. Well, not only does 1 have a value on that line, but now all the decimals do, like for instance 1.5 because there's a value on that blue line, or 2.5 which I could go up to here. My values for x that are included in this graph are all of x values that start at 1 and finish at 5, right here. Every one of these x values on that red solid line, there is a point on the graph that I can hit. Therefore, my domain is now listed with less than or equal to signs. My domain is 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. Now, let's talk range. Remember, range is the y values. Range is how high and how low the graph gets. Well, if you notice, the low number is all the way down here at negative 7. That's the lowest point of the grid. So therefore, negative 7 comes first. And the graph makes it to a high point all the way up here at 6. So therefore, my y values are in between negative 7 and 6. And that is the domain and range for this particular graph. All right, here's your problem. I'm going to plot on here four coordinates, and hopefully you're able to tell exactly which coordinates they are. I'm going to put a dot right here. I'm going to put a dot right there, and I'm going to connect it with a line. I'm going to put a dot way down here and connect it with a line. And I'm going to put a dot right here and connect it with a line. Please pause the video, and the two questions I want you to answer are, for this particular graph, what is the domain and what is the range? Okay, domain. 
Remember, domain goes this way and this way, left and right. How far does the graph go to the left and how far does it go to the right? Well, the graph goes all the way over here to here's the first coordinate, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. The graph has a point right here on the, that has an x coordinate of negative 4. So therefore, negative 4 is the lowest number in the domain. And remember, that's less than or equal to x. And now, how far to the right does the graph go? Well, the graph ends right here, which is the coordinate 2, 0. So therefore, x is less than or equal to 2. So hopefully you have that as the domain. Now, in red, the range is how far up and down the graph goes. Well, I'll find the lowest point on the graph, which is way down here at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So the graph reaches a low point on the y-axis of negative 5. That's less than or equal to the y value. And how high does the graph get? Well, the highest point is right there, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 on the y-axis. So therefore, the range is in between negative 5 and 4. So hopefully that explains how to figure out domain and range to you and make sure that you know those concepts. Please ask questions if you do not.